Black Adam, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, came out this weekend. We both went and seen it. You were already giving your first impressions on it yeah, right after yeah. coming out of the theater. But uh, thoughts? So, I feel like the the route of origin stories usually go one of two ways. We either slow play it and show the the maturing, the maturation of the character through, you know, various backstories mm-hmm. or they give it to you quick within about five to 10 minutes span and they drop you immediately into present day and we start the movie. Yeah. They obviously chose to go with the latter and I feel like for the purpose of where the plot ultimately ended up going, it kind of made sense to do it that way as opposed to spending a whole lot of time on the origin. I do feel like the origin portion of it was slow as far as, I guess, maybe pacing. And then yeah, we see, lead it, it didn't into, last that long. It was only it, a few minutes. It, it, it didn't last that long, but it felt longer than... Compared to what happens in the rest of the movie, Mm -hmm. it felt like a long portion of it, even though it probably was only, like you said, a few minutes. Yeah. And see, like my my pacing issues come in the second act after he wakes up and and can dock. I would agree with that as well. The the pacing got very choppy. Yeah. It's like we were we were kind of like jump scenes. You know what I mean? We were like clipping at that point for a while there. (sighs) Especially in between his face fight with the uh, the mercenaries and the and the the JSA, it just kind of felt like we were going okay here, here, here. Not only it do I agree with that, I literally thought the movie was about to end, and then we yeah, got like, right? and then we got like thirty more minutes. Right? I was like, like, oh, like okay, all that right. That second act got very choppy. Like I thought the movie was wrapping up at a certain point, and then it just didn't. <laughs> you yeah. <know? laughs> yeah. Um. But. Some of the positives, though. This is how you do action. Yes. This is how you do it. The action scenes were really good. It was so good. And it was it was like they did it without being overly gory either. So mm-hmm. they, they could still keep it PG-13. I can definitely see where they had to draw some things back to make it PG-13. I can, I can see where this movie was on the cusp of an R rating. Yeah, oh, yeah. A little, little bit more blood, and we'd have been right in there, for sure. Especially at the, one of the last scenes. Um, uh, the, My only gripe, I guess, with any of the action scenes were early on with like the use of slow motion. I think they kind of used slow motion a almost bit. to a crutch. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't terrible, I guess, if I had a gripe with any of the action scenes, though, I think early on I was like, okay, it's a little much, I guess. But not bad. Mm-hmm. I like the overall story, right? So the champion of Kondok ends up getting, uh, you know, buried in the in the crumbled temple of the king. Mm-hmm. The tyrant ends up being a champion of the, of the people, gets resurrected. And then come to find out, it kind of had that that Game of Thrones feel in where there's lore versus reality. So, like, the lures permeate the years, and, and, and those legends go on and on and on and on, and they build up these big these big monuments to these people. Mm-hmm. And then you get to see what actually happened behind it, yeah, which makes it a lot more compelling and a lot more interesting. So, I, I, I liked the overall direction of the, of the plot. One thing that I had to point out that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So this is a guy who lived 5,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. It took him all of five minutes to be able to communicate effectively with everyone. I think I've seen everything. somebody else say that too. Yeah, no, it, I, it's I agree. like, fam, what? That's a little wild. Um, they did not put a whole bunch of time into the cultural and historical accuracy parts in terms of what language should he speak and, and how quickly does he learn English and 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 you know there's more than just cars and buildings that are going to be different to this guy like his literal concept of how to communicate is going to be completely different like even thor gave us a you know a few scenes of him getting acclimated to like modern life sure yeah yeah in the first thor movies absolutely yeah yeah, yeah but yeah. this there was nothing here in fact the only thing that he didn't quite grasp the concept of is going through, through walls a door yeah, <laughs> instead has, of a door. But then he immediately, no, no, that's how we entered rooms. So why are you <laughs> crashing through every wall in these people's home? Like every single one, their apartment is destroyed. Yeah. I hope you built them a house. After. <laughs> oh, uh, not only that, he also couldn't grasp the concept of sarcasm, 
But then other I than that, that was hilarious. It was funny. It was definitely funny. <laughs> I thought you said you weren't going to kill them. It was sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> See, like at that point, it's funny because he's being dead serious mm-hmm. and it's almost the 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 nuance of how to use sarcasm is alien to him. It's foreign. Yeah. So that's why it's funny. Mm-hmm. But like in the moments where he's trying to be funny, it's not as funny. Not as funny. You know what, though? I think their usage of jokes here mostly landed, at least compared to that of, like, a Love and Thunder. Well, yeah, because it, you, it for, for a couple of reasons. They could have killed two birds with one stone. They could have given some more accuracy in, in terms of the in terms of the, the age of the character mm-hmm. by using that as humor more. Yeah. Like I think they tried it with the whole in and out of buildings thing, but that like that's not that's not accurate to the time he lived in. It's just sure. accurate to the power set that he has. So, would you expect Superman to just bust through the side of your house? You know, no. I um, would say at least as far as the comedy aspects of it, the things that were even the most annoying to me, things like Adam Smasher, mm-hmm. were even like pale in, in comparison to things like the Space Goats and Love and well, Thunder. Well, because there was no. And, and, and you know I hate to take time out of the, the video to talk about this but there was no like there was no rah rah look at me and my social issue you yeah. know yeah there, there was no hey I am woman hear me roar there was no hey uh you know what whatever yeah whatever it may be you know they they wanted to tell a story about a compelling character mm-hmm. and it showed that because the focus was on the character yep yep they they didn't get into a whole lot of messaging stuff out, outside of the imperialism versus the will of the people kind of thing. Sure. But that was the overlapping theme of the movie. I was going to say, that was That didn't integral. need to be, you know, force-fed. And the few times that they did get into these grandstanding speeches, it actually played a role into what was happening. The kid does it on the, the skateboard to the to the to the, the security guard, and he's doing it so that his mom and her friends can actually get past. Mm-hmm. You know? They're doing it at the end of the movie and the guy's doing it. He's doing his long villainous talk, not only to distract, but to entice Teth Adam or Black Adam, whatever we're calling him, to uh, to attack him, to kill him mm-hmm. so that he could gain the powers that he's trying to get from the crown. Or there was he- a point to it. It wasn't just this, hey, we're going to make you, you know, think that we are the best people in the world by taking two minutes out of the dialogue to force feed you an agenda or, or or my political viewpoint or whatever you know a lot of writers seem to want to or, or need to do in their projects especially these superhero films mm-hmm. recently there wasn't any of that yeah and hey it still comes out virtuous mm-hmm. it still comes out with those same life lessons that you want to teach you still get your message across about the people's will being stronger than an imperialist force through telling a solid story, you get that message you across. You still get the message across. That, that's focusing why I was more on telling the story. And even in a in, in, in what some may consider a lackluster script, I liked it. But but I've I've seen a lot of people, you know, have their, their feelings about the way that it the, the, the movie went. But even in that, they were able to accomplish what most MCU movies are able to accomplish without trying so hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. After seeing this movie Aldis Hodge could definitely play T'Challa. You think? I think he did a good enough job in playing a superhero, uh, a, a, a smart superhero, a rich superhero, to the point where I, I, I'm pretty convinced that he could play T'Challa. Now, there, the the one thing is, I don't know if he can do the accent. But. So, yeah, the accent is, is going to be a thing because mm-hmm. I, I his voice flutters in between, like, like bodybuilder and then he has these like pitch inflections where it's like does he have a high pitched voice? Cuz sometimes he'll be talking like this and I was like what where did that come from? Yeah. yeah. Um so I think Aldis Hodge does he does gunslinger very well. He does fearless hero look death in the eye and spit at him. He does that type of stuff very well. Mhm. Does he do regalness? or or high class sophistication that type of stuff does he does he have the ability to play a cold hearted pragmatist cuz he plays a virtu- he t- plays a virtuous character very well mhm invisible man 
uh, this movie, Hawkman, he, he, he plays a virtuous character very well. Can he play a cold hearted character? Cause that's the, I think when most people think of T'Challa or what was missing from Bozeman's T'Challa, it was one, the hyper intelligence and two, the, the cold hearted pragmatist. Now we didn't get a chance to see him develop into that. Unfortunately, rest in peace to Chadwick. That would be the, the, one of the first things I would want to see out of a new T'Challa. So is he able to do those things? Yeah. Could he potentially be someone who could be seen as a villain in a movie, but still have likable quality similar to what Killmonger has provided mm. in the MCU? That that kind of dynamic is what you're looking for with a true T'Challa depiction because he does a lot of stuff that a lot of people don't agree with in the name of being ready, mm-hmm. in the in the in the name of not being unprepared. Yeah, you know. I think okay. So you said high class sophistication. I think. He did an okay job of showing that to some yeah, level. Yeah, but Hawkman's not literally royalty. Yes. You know? Yeah. You Well, you said regalness. regalness and so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's that. Uh, I think there are obvious challenges that he's going to have to execute on if, if he were ever to become T'Challa, mm-hmm. which because he's in D.C. now, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's a thing. If um, if he was doing the the origin story to T'Challa, how they did Chadwick Boseman, I think he could have done that adequately. Yeah. Um, but now I, you want to see development yeah, out of T'Challa. So now, so. We're obviously, if we ever get one, it will be different from Chadwick's version, mm-hmm. and that'll that that'll be some of the stuff that they can pull on for the character. So just interested to see. If he ever does get a role where like he's not the most liked character on the screen, because clearly they were making Hawkeye the most liked guy in the room. Yeah, you know, um, ah. when he's not that. Well, yeah, they they were definitely trying that. I think at times Doctor Fate became that though. For for what time Doctor Fate was able to actually be Doctor Fate? Yeah, I was not in love with Doctor Fate's depiction here. I mean, it, it was a good performance by Pierce Brosnan. They didn't do enough with explaining the helm and what kind of control that helm has over Dr. Fate to make him fight these battles and, 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 and to carry out, um, you know, carry out his justice. It's a lot like Khonshu and Moon Knight, yeah. that relationship. Yeah, we were made to just, we were rushed into that. Yeah, it, it felt rushed. It felt incomplete. And then he dies in, in the end. So it's like. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that. I definitely I didn't, didn't like, like that, that either. I didn't like it either. Because now we'll, we'll probably, you know, at least for a while, not see Dr. Fate flesh out. Yeah. And I would I mean, love to see a Dr. Fate movie. I don't know. I mean, th- there there is a potential for him to come back because, I mean, he, he, I th- he, maybe he's living within the helm. But then the helm disappears, right? So yeah. I, I don't know what's going to happen with Dr. Fate if we'll ever see him again. But that, that was a very interesting character. I would hate to say that they maybe cut some of his stuff because he was too similar of a character to Dr. Strange. I would almost have to believe that. But I mean, man, that is such a disservice to the character because even though there are similarities, though, that's what makes Dr. Fate the character he is. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, well, obvious similarities to Dr. Strange, but I think they did. I mean, well, Dr. Strange had two movies, so I can't even, I can't even yeah. really... Uh, compare those two but i think they did a good enough job of explaining his you know reality bending and and things of that nature Mm. uh pretty well in the in the few moments that dr fate had also i was confused as to how hawkman was able to activate the the helm without putting it on that was very odd to me never seen that done (laughs) and then for him to just be like well let me show you an old trick that he showed me Mm -hmm. and it's just like can he even teach you that trick? Yeah, like I was about to say, how how would you be able to do it if you're not? <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, that was a little a little off. Uh, I I kind of like Cyclone. Kind of like Cyclone for for what she so was I in think the movie. That was a that was a, a swap from Red Tornado, maybe. Unless I'm mm. missing a, a a female counterpart character in the, mm-hmm. in the books, I probably am because I don't I'm not that huge in the DC. And then Adam Smasher. I don't. I didn't think that they had to be teenaged. I didn't didn't mind the performances, but I didn't. Yeah. We're doing, you know, the Justice Society of America. It, Adam Smasher wasn't terrible. He was just clearly comic relief, and mm-hmm. the comic relief that yeah, came from Cyclone, him wasn't they didn't give her much of anything to do. 
Nah, yeah, nah. Her Homeboy was her job was to jump out the helicopter multiple times mm-hmm. and set off a tornado. I didn't give her much of anything to do. That was pretty much it. But what from what we did see of her, yeah, I mean, she was she was good. She was good. I also just didn't like the fact that um, what was my guy's name? Start with an I. The the who ended up being the big bad, Ishmael. Ishmael. I I, I don't like how. For most of the movie, I mean, sure, I knew he was bad, but I didn't know he was supposed to become the big bad. Because again, I we knew thought this somebody movie was had over. to be because, again, midway through the second act, I'm like, who and what are they going to fight together? Because they they didn't fought each other too much for that to be the final fight scene already. So, yeah. who was going to be? Is the king going to resurrect himself, or what, what, what are guess we doing? Technically, here? in a way, kind of, yeah. you know, through Ishmael. Mm-hmm. So I knew that there had to be another like central villain because it clearly wasn't going to be Black Adam. Yeah, he was being championed, and the main conflict couldn't stay on the the Justice Society of America. So it, it had to be somebody. Yes. Yeah. One thing uh, I I I must have missed uh, was there ever a Jay Z concert because everybody was throwing up the rock. Where was Jay Z? Hey man, I, I guess they just chose <laughs> to go with the dynasty sign as their their, uh, their mockingbird. No, it was cool. I just I I just kept thinking that was funny. I mean, obviously it's it's a sign, so you know it works. Oh. But I definitely was like, Jay Z's coming out right now. <laughs> um, and then obviously we'd be remiss to not mention the the Henry Cavill. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. Mm-hmm. That is huge because it wasn't it just last month that we were trying to field rumors about him coming into the MCU. So looks like they got him locked back down and they will they will not poach Mr. Cavill. A lot of people calling out a spoiler when The Rock basically alluded to that happening. Yeah. I mean, it, they damn near told us that it was happening. But, you know, uh, now imagine how much of a oh shit moment that would have been had everybody kept their mouth shut on it. Oh yeah! Oh, that would have been huge. That'd that been that huge. that is the one slip up in promotion that I will give the Rock and this team is that well, he y'all should have kept sell this one. movie. Y'all should have kept that one in the tuck. Yeah, because what would have happened after this weekend? You would have replicated whatever it is you actually brought in, based off of the fact that Henry Cavill Superman is in it. Mm-hmm. You didn't need to tell everybody. You should have trusted the consumer. Yeah. Should have trusted us because you knew we would get excited for it. So you're trying to drum up more pub. Well, let everybody find out and let word of mouth drum it up. Yeah. It's, it's always more effective. Yep. It's always more effective. Yep. 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 The similarities in origin to uh, to Captain Marvel. I wonder how they bring those franchises together. Because right now there there couldn't be a more stark difference between Black Adam and Captain Marvel, and these are two traditionally joint properties. So how they bridge that gap. I think what they're going to do, because I didn't see any sniff of Black Adam in, in the uh, the Captain Marvel 2 trailer that I watched at the theater. For anybody who's confused, he's talking about Shazam. Yes, that car, that Captain Marvel, Shazam. Um, not Brie Larson. Yeah. We got we got higher information for your shit, man. They know who nah, I most, most people watching this will probably know, but when uh, you first did that the last time, I was like, what? <laughs> but I think they're going to let Billy Batson mature in these childish ass movies that they keep making but uh they're going to do his maturation on his own before he has to fight black adam yeah right to the point where they're gonna show black adam fighting superman before they show billy batson and black adam fighting together yeah so yeah. by the time that they actually make that happen it can be the epic battle that it's supposed to be because now you got a Billy Batson that's respected as a superhero as opposed to a teenage kid who's trying to figure out how he does both. And that's that's a good move. Yeah. I definitely I think, think so. that's a good move. I think so. Plus, I think you, you've already proven that Shazam can be financially successful with the model that you've already put out. There's no reason to change it up, right? If you made a billion before, why the hell would you ever change it? Who knows? Wait, I don't something. know where they're going with this, but it seems like the only properties that they're confident in going forward are... Black Adam, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Batman. Flash? Apparently. Oh, yeah. Apparently. So, literally, the Justice League. They can continue making Justice League movies. Do they have a Batman? They got Robert Pattinson. Oh, yeah. Shit. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they do. 
So, I mean, if you do Justice League movies without Batman and just Batman exists off in his own little thing with Joker and maybe pull it together eventually, who knows, man? Who knows? Whatever they end up doing cinematically, Black Adam's going to be a part of it. Yes. For sure. Oh, I, for sure. One of the things I was going to say is for at least the first few minutes, seeing The Rock was, I'm watching The Rock. He eventually <laughs> transcended that, and I could finally get into him as Black Adam. But for for a little while at the beginning there, I'm like, bro, that's the Rock. That's the Rock. <laughs> that's the Rock, man. Like I can't I can't see anything else. So you, at least you know he did a good enough job. Is that the actual comic book accurate version of Black Adam looks exactly how the Rock used to look when he wrestled? Like yeah. exactly the same hairstyle, same skin tone, everything. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. I agree like if that. he would have went back to '90s wrestling rock to play Ooh. this role, he could have with the hair and everything. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, no, that would have been, been hilarious. I that agree. Would have been hilarious. That'd have been a little much though. Uh, a lot much, but it would have been funny as hell. Yeah, I agree. Kevin Hart would have never stopped making fun of that shit. <laughs> solid film, man. That was a solid at bat. They didn't need to do too much. Didn't need to get too creative. Um, you know, some obvious things that could have been done better. Some, some, I won't call them plot holes, but plot aberrations. Uh, but a lot of room to grow here. There's a lot of runway on this franchise, and this is a good start. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm, I'm interested to see how it plays into the greater universe, even with, um, with Henry Cavill being on there. Now, Reports are saying that J.J. Abrams is still getting his Superman film, his mm. black Superman film. Mm. Fam, just do Icon. Just do Icon. Make it easy. He's got popular comic books being made about him right now. He's got brand recognition at this very moment since Milestone kicked off and is going. Just do Icon. Do not do Black Car Clint. Do not convolute the Superman stuff that y'all got going on right now by just throwing a black guy in the Superman suit. Don't do it. There are characters that exist with the same power set that you would have to do in, in the same backstory, essentially that you would have to do for a black Superman. It already exists. Literally do not have to do that. Um, but in all in all, I would give it an eight out of 10. I would say this is at least as good as Multiverse of Madness. I think Multiverse of Madness had a little bit more dynamic of a storyline, but in terms of enjoyment, uh, continuity in the script, and um, production, cinematography, I mean, it looked looked pretty damn good. It did. It did. I would say it, it's at least as good as Multiverse is Madness. It's it anything clears Thor: Love and Thunder. It's not even worth putting on scale. Man, what? Not not No Way Home level. This wasn't No Way Home, but it, it was at least as good as as Multiverse of Madness in my point in my opinion. So then, first of all, let me say I pretty much agree with everything there. Um, yeah, the rating is about the same for me as well. Uh, my question is now, you know, obviously critics weren't super keen on this movie but you know audiences pretty much everywhere really like this movie and are at least on the same page around an eight out of ten i think i think it had like an 80 something on rotten tomatoes um will this do better as far as i guess audiences um audiences are concerned will this do better than black panther 2 do you think uh, we talking about money or just in terms of audience reception? Audience reception. It it's a lot less controversial. I, I I think that by by nature, just by the fact that it's not as controversial, it'll be more well received for the general fan base as opposed to Black Panther Wakanda Forever. You're going to be it's it's going to be dependent on who you're talking to for a review of this movie. Mm. I think it's gonna. It's a lot less controversial over there on the Black Adam side. You just either like it or you don't. And then the people that didn't like it already spoke. Yeah, you know that's how you got your Rotten Tomato score. So, yep. yep, yep Black yep. Panther: Wakanda Forever. I think there are still people who don't know that the the main character is not going to be in it. That there are tons of people who haven't yet 
realize that they're going to make a superhero die of cancer if they haven't already, you know, gotten off of that. And there's even more people that don't realize that they're trying to do their best impression of Tyler Perry by giving this man or giving the franchise a fatherless son to lead the nation. Yeah. So when all of that is, is seen and it's actually put on screen, then we'll see. We'll see. But it certainly is even on the, even at the onset, a lot less controversial than what black Panther, or excuse me, what black Adam was putting on screen. Give us your thoughts on black Adam. If you've already seen, if you haven't seen, I hope you didn't watch this whole thing. <laughs> Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Give us your thoughts in the prompt below. Come back for our next movie review. Absolutely. And go ahead and check out some of our other film reviews that we've done. I think the last one that we did was Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, He's and, great man. Oh, great man. Yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, and make sure you subscribe because we will be uh, reviewing other films. Probably not the be- next big one, but we will be reviewing other films. So make sure to oh, subscribe. Oh, no, we don't have to. It won't be opening weekend or probably any time close, but it'll get reviewed eventually. Fair enough. Make sure you subscribe for more.